Hi Paul from Contemporary Synth here. In the last video I showed you how to connect Ableton Live Lite to the Phantom O. In this video I'm going to give you a demo of how to use the, that functionality to throw together a song. Uh, the song's going to be a setting of Psalm 110 that came up in our readings uh, a while back and I had to set it to music. Uh, this psalm has been set to music thousands of times. And I guess it's the most referenced psalm in the New Testament. I didn't know that. It's been set to music by Mozart, Handel, and even by three times by Vivaldi. Very popular. So because this is contemporary synth in an effort to do it a little differently, we're going to do it in the style of a kind of a 60s funk, kind of a son of the preacher man, son of a preacher man meets uh, Aretha Franklin. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Uh, I don't have any sound right now, so this is starting from absolute zero. The first thing I did in the last video, I want to show you how I could undo, because it shows external over here. I had set these to green to be external MIDI. If you hold shift, you can set them back, and then just hold them again to unselect them. All right, I'm going to start with zone six. I have to arm it. So I select the zone that I want to play. I have to arm it on Ableton Live where I can't hear it. And you can get around that with the monitor. You could select in, and if you do that, you'll hear it every time, but then it won't play when there's actually a track loaded. So auto is where you want to be with that. I want to select my sound. So in each case, I'm going to pick my channel and then pick the tone that I want to hear. In this case, it's going to be a drum kit. And I'm going to select kit number 11 from the common library, which meets my needs and what's really cool is I found a pattern in here and I'm going to play the pattern into the system. Now you'll see that if I press my drum keys I get level and live but if I play this I do not and that's because by default the drums are exporting on zone 10. So I need to back that down. You're going to hear the voice of each channel until it gets to 6. And there it is. All right, the rhythm that I want is 57. So use the shift when you scroll to go fast. And the tempo I want is 100. And I need to set that on the computer and the keyboard. Uh, there's a cool click and drag that's kind of nice. Uh, interestingly, if I go to the DAW control, you can see it is automatically syncing here as well. All right, so the measure though, I'm going to do the refrain first. It's six measures. I'm going to play four measures of the verse pattern and then two measures of the fill. I can either click on that record button or press right here to record it. It's going to give me four beats of a count in, and then I'm going to start my track. Ready? Oh, bust. Oh, I got to hit the wrong one. I got to hit this one. Three, four. Two. Three, four. Just switch in here. One, two. And I hit it now and it'll stop at the end of the measure. All right, so I can stop the pattern. The computer's just going to start looping. And go to DAW control and press stop to do that. All right, I'm going to arm zone five. Zone five. It's going to be my bass. I'm going to pick fretless. And let's start recording. So it's going to be track five, one, two, three, four. Now this cool fold button down here only shows rows on which there, a MIDI note exists, so it makes it pretty easy to see where you are and edit it. Now my whole MIDI track fits on the screen. Like that note was wrong. Maybe it was right. Okay. Next, I'm going to activate track four and select it over here and then pick my tone. For track four, I'm going to pick a clavinet. A clavinet is a piano, it looks like a piano, but it actually has 
electric guitar pickups instead of a soundboard. It was invented by the Hohner Company in the 60s. It was produced through the 60s and 70s. Uh, Stevie Wonder made it super famous. So it's, uh, and it was in kind of in that 60s era, a lot of it. And you can put it through an amp with effects. So there's lots of cool uh, stuff that you'll hear with it. Uh, so I thought that would be perfect for this song. That's going to be track four. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. enough now though you'll be able to get it later and notice also I can up here right click and uh, type in my titles if it's if it's easier to keep track that way and when I do that it's going to update over here too because those are in sync all right three is my last track so over here to pick my sound and this is going to be that burping berry sax let's do it one two three four Actually, I just realized I made a mistake. Don't adjust the volumes while you're playing, or it will adjust the volumes every time and go, it'll make that exact same change. Uh, don't do that. Two, three, four. <laughs> Now, that's it for my refrain. To do the verse, I'm going to copy the drums down. It's also exactly six measures, so the drums will work as is. And I'm going to copy the bass down. Uh, the bass is very similar, except for the last two measures. And again, because I have fold selected, everything I see is on the screen here. And I can delete the last two measures. Now, I've been clicking into these clips to record into a new box each time. The record button in a clip does not allow you to overdub. It only allows you to create new. The session record button up here allows you to overdub. And I want to record just those last two measures. So if I hit record. not muted the refrain track so that sounded a little funny but it'll sound fine when we go to do it for real the last thing i need is this scene down here and ableton live calls that a scene which is very similar to pattern a it's a row across the last thing i need here is my last note and i can just double instead of recording it i'm just going to double click in here and enter these notes all i want in my drum is a kick i have to activate it kick and a crash. So this kick note, I think it's C4, C3, C2, but I think it's going to call it C1. There it is. So C1. And then I want my crash up here to C sharp 2. Okay. And I'll drag that out for two beats. And then this is my bass. All I need here is a, I need to activate that channel. And selected over here is a low F. What is it F2? It's F1 for two beats. For the clav over here, uh, this is too hard to type it in, so I'm just going to record it. Two. Oh, thought I was 
going to get my four beat. And it needs to be here. One, two, three, four. Okay, and this is my sax, and I can double click here, select it, arm it, and I need that low F again. All right, so to play them over here, here's my last note. Let me try that again. I heard something funny. Okay. And, that, and notice how it's looping. We need to fix that. And that, so this is my refrain up here. And the next scene is my verse. All I need to do to make this playable is create some looping. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see that because this is really clever. Uh, if I double click on the one in the scene, and then I come down to this bottom left corner, I have this follow action. And if I select follow action, I can tell the program what to do when it reaches a certain point in the track. And in this case, I'm going to say at the end of six measures, go to the next scene. Now there is this percentage here, which is really interesting. You can have it 50% of the time jump and 50% of the time do something else. Imagine if you had an eight bar pattern and you had two bars in a different scene as a fill, you could jump at measure six and play the fill, or you could go straight to the end. In each case, you would go to something afterwards. So that way it says in the manual that if you have a long song with lots of repetition, you can vary the jump points and create some variation in your song. I'm not doing that today, but it's a pretty cool function. So scene one, which is the refrain, will always go to the verse. Let's go up here to the verse. And notice it's a dashed arrow now because it has some programming on it. I'm going to go down here, scene two, which is my verse. I'm going to set follow action. And it is always going to go up to the top. And it's going to do that after six measures. So I now have an infinite loop. And scene three, when it plays my last note, it's going to stop. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the last note. All right? Um, so that's pretty straightforward. In order to make this work, I need to be able to start and stop it manually. And I'll use the MIDI controller again. So I will click here and I'll use S1 to start it. Except notice it came up on channel three. I'm going to play along with my song here, but I'm going to play in channel two. And I had previously set that to an organ as a demo, which I don't want it to be. So I want to use a ragtime piano for this. Okay. I don't hear it because I have to activate channel two. Oh, but I'm in MIDI right now. Okay, so now if I do it, and if I play in channel two, now I get channel two with this button, and then I'm going to go to the last note with this button, S2. Now, I've learned through doing this, hold down shift to find out where you've set the buttons. My button two is set to 64, which is also the same as the sustain pedal. So I need to change that. So I changed it to 63. I don't know if I've done that previously or if they came like that, but if you set it to 64, if it's at 64, you're going to cause yourself some confusion. So now I press it and it's set to that. All right, let's turn these off. And I need to arm my channel two. There it was, I guess I hit the wrong one. And let's just name this for the sake of clarity. All right, so now I can practice by saying, that's gonna start. And if I press this, it should finish the measure and then hit my last note, okay? If I wanted to play this, I'd have to activate it, so I don't. All right, let's play the song. Uh, all right, start. You are a priest forever. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. You are a priest forever in the light of Melchizedek. You are a king forever. God is born, he won't repent. Thank you. 
God said, my king, come sit at my right hand. I will make your enemies bow down across the land. You will triumph over them, forever you will stand. Come on, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a king forever, God has sworn you won't repent. The source of all your power will be the Lord. Your victories will stretch forth from Zion across the world. God has been beside you from the day that you were born. You are, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a king forever. God has sworn he won't repent. All right. Well, I hope that helped you out. I hope you learned something. I hope you have some fun. I wrote this song so you can have it free for non-commercial use. I'll put the link in the description and you are welcome to perform this exact tutorial in the comfort of your own home. Hope it works out for you. Please subscribe if you're getting value out of these and I'll keep making more. See you next time.